Well, hello, Minecrafters. So, due to popular requests, I finally got around to making a nice world download of the programmable smart intersections here. Uh, this is, these are revised versions. They're actually a bit more compact than uh, the ones I had displayed before. And we have the same functionality, but stuffed it into a little smaller package here. So, I'll go ahead and show the operation and then we'll just explain what's happening here. So what we can do with this is we have these various bases, like this is purple base, we have orange base, pink base, and these are all just destinations, you know, we have green, blue, and yellow. We've got the main base over here at yellow. But here's what we're gonna do. So you start at a location, uh, this is purple, and you're gonna have my carts run errands for you. So in here we have a coded system. And right now, I'm just using these concrete colors as the tags, but these can be anything, really. So this is just saying, hey, we're going to go to yellow base, then we're going to come back to purple base. Uh, what we're going to do at yellow base, though, is now we have codes for what we want to do. We're going to use the bucket for the retrieval code. Again, could be anything. We're going to retrieve, and then we're going to say, let's get some redstone and some diamonds. And I'm using the redstone and diamonds themselves uh, just to make it simple to see in, in action, but again, these could be anything you want them to be, uh, something uh, a little less expensive, perhaps. So let's go ahead and send this off and see what we've got here. Uh, so this cart's going to go enter this intersection here, and it's going to read that first item and evaluate it for where it's supposed to go. Uh, but this only reads purple, orange, and pink. Anything it doesn't know about, uh, the yellow, it sends down this line here. Now over at this base, or this intersection, we do have the yellow. So it knows to send yellow this way to the next intersection. And this intersection reads yellow, green, and blue. And so it's going to know to send yellow out this destination here. And then we come to a little miniature buffer here. Uh, this is just so that not too many carts enter here at once. Uh, now it's read it, saying, hey, we're going to pick up items. So now it's going to go into, this is your sorted storage. It's pretty standard up top. Uh, the difference is at the bottom here, we have these little timed automatic unloaders uh, to retrieve items. So it went and got the redstone, and now it's in the diamond bay here. And right now we're just getting 16 of each item, and that's just what the timer is like designated them on. And it goes to the bottom row, and now it's done. We're going to strip off the yellow tag here. Ooh, so now it just has the purple left. So now this intersection is going to evaluate for purple. It doesn't know anything about purple, so it's just going to send it along a default line, which is this direction, to the next smart intersection. And now this intersection, once again, doesn't know anything about purple. It just knows brown, gray, blue, green, and yellow. So it's going to send it to the default line, which is this direction. So finally we get to this intersection, and it actually knows about purple. Uh, so it's going to then evaluate, hey, we need to send this to the purple output as soon as its turn comes up here there it goes had to wait for another cart and so now we have this finally retrieved and so we still have the purple tag because it hasn't been stripped off yet but we've retrieved 16 of the redstone and 16 of the diamonds now as you can see we do have some other traffic and I've simulated some other things going on here so over here we have a simulated quarry where we're mining the diorite and you just put the diorite in the chest and periodically carts are coming to pick it up and transport it to another simulated base over here at green you can see a cart going in there now and so it's essentially just depositing all this diorite into something that we can use in this chest here and when this cart is empty uh, it's taking a little time to unload because this must be filled yeah it's saturated but as soon as that's empty, it'll be done, and now it gets reprogrammed. So it's going to drop one of these, that's the orange, and green. So it's essentially sending it, say, hey, we're going to send that to orange and then come back to green. And so when that cart goes back over to orange, we have two of them here. It goes in here, it fills up this uh, it's, it's, this one's based on a timing system as well, so it's completely full at the moment, but the timer just goes off. has the orange and green tag. We strip off the orange because we're done. That one's going to go through the intersections, come over to green, where the green tag will then be stripped off. 
right here and then the rest of it will get deposited in the chest and then sent back in to with the programming uh, to go back to orange and the green. So it's just a continuous loop. Now because this quarry over here will eventually run out of diorite, I've actually done the reverse here where uh, now we're just going to use a blue base to actually pick up <laughs> large quantities of the diorite and refill it. And this works similarly just in reverse with uh, pink and blue tags. So this is then going to come back over to pink base and deposit it right back into the chest uh, where we were pulling it out from. When it's done, it once again gets reprogrammed going to blue and then pink and just goes in a loop. So that's essentially just to have some traffic, shows you some of the usage. And uh, I do have a tutorial of this item over here with the one tile of a wide loaders and automatic retrieval. I'll put a little link to that, uh, but this is just essentially a little bit more compact version of it, and you can play around and see. This is uh, essentially the brain. Uh, you pick up items, say, if you, if it, uh, the gold uh, bar gets matched to the filter, then that's going to flip the switch for the gold, and that's how the cart knows which one to go into it. Uh, depositing uh, is works with the uh, chest code. I'll show you that in a moment. And just comes up here, unloads it, and refilters everything there. All right, now that we've retrieved these items, we're just going to go ahead and send them back to storage because we don't actually want them. And what we do to do that is, once again, the coded system. Go to yellow base, come back to purple. Uh, what we're going to do is go to yellow base, use the chest as the symbol for storage, and then come back to purple. And so we'll send this off, and it goes just like it did before, gets evaluated for the correct destination. Uh, in this case, it's going down a default line, just like that. And this one's going to get triggered, as you can see, because it knows where yellow is, so it goes this way. And this one knows where yellow is as well. So this switch will end up getting flipped. And uh, now instead of, so this is where we have the bucket or chest for the fetch. The chest it knows to send up this way, where it deposits all its items, and then comes back, and it's going to go all the way back to purple. Uh, this little thing over here, because this thing is going to suck out all the items, what we're doing is we still have our yellow and purple tags. So we're actually taking them out. Let's take out one each, saving them for later. And then when it's done de emptying everything, it'll come back down and pick them up in the same order that it deposited them. So it still has yellow and purple. And then finally, yellow gets stripped off, leaving just the purple tag. So then this will just get evaluated for purple, evaluated for purple, and evaluated for purple and back to purple we are completely empty still have the purple tag because it hasn't been stripped off yet all right so a little bit about these intersections uh, so what we have here is inbound carts get funneled up to the top here and they all get combined to the line and go down this chute here and this is a, a large buffer i have a tutorial for this essentially we pass things over this power uh, activator rail to turn off the sucking property of these uh, hopper mine carts. Otherwise, when they get stacked, they'll steal items. We don't want that. And then when they get pow passed over this unpowered activator rail, it turns them back on to what they were. But essentially, once a cart goes through the buffer and comes here, it's this hopper sucks off the first item. And that's going to be the destination tag we're currently using. That gets then evaluated in these uh, passed over these item filters. And if they match, then it will trigger the corresponding switch. And once you go over the switch, then the pressure plate here resets it. And these are just uh, flip flops that get activated. Uh, they're just hoppers, or excuse me, droppers facing into each other. Uh, to activate the appropriate switch. Uh, they look a little complicated because they're sort of hemmed in here. Um, this is what I found to take up at least the amount of space here and get the same functionality. And then once that's evaluated, this slow down here of the cart 
gives the item time to propagate through this and end up in this hopper, no matter which route it took, so that the cart can pick it back up and go to the next intersection. Uh, if it doesn't trigger any of these switches, uh, everything else just gets to the end one, and that'll just come down here, so to preserve uh, you know the default tag and if none of these switches get switched what happens is the cart just goes down its sort of default line which is essentially sending it to the next intersection that may or may not know what to do with it and then over here uh, all these little loops do is if a cart gets caught going the wrong way this just writes it back and so it makes the system a little bit more robust and that can happen if carts start colliding with each other quick thing about these buffers. Uh, these are just little miniature buffers to store carts in line while we wait for whatever's happening here to finish because we don't want more than one minecart doing its thing. Uh, and you can kind of see how this works here. Uh, probably don't need to do a whole tutorial on this because, you know, it's pretty small and thin. Uh, but I can go over that if it's uh, a little complicated. I do have an alternate version that's even smaller. Um, it doesn't really save you last way. It's just a little smaller vertically. Uh, this really can't handle more than one cart waiting at a time, but could be useful for someone. And then over here, we have another one. Uh, this one's just in line this way as opposed to coming out perpendicular, so that might be useful. These are uh, a little bit more complicated, but they're improved versions of the buffer that I have. Uh, these actually work on a principle of using uh, an observer watching a string as, as opposed to a whole tripwire hook, we're able to save some space that way. Now, one other thing is that eventually, when we strip off tags, uh, these hoppers are eventually going to fill up with our used tags, uh, which means we're going to have to clean them out at some point or we're going to have to destroy them. Um, but I also tested with the idea of having a cart periodically come automated to come up and clean up the tags. And so essentially what I have here is we have a special cart coming from Brown Base that goes to all these destinations. And uh, we're using hoppers as the code. So if cart comes with a hopper, it gets shifted down into here. Uh, it goes through, picks up all the tags, and then sends them back to the Brown Base. Uh, it's a little tricky how that works. There might be a smaller way to do it, uh, but I'll see if we can find one. Okay, so here's a great example. So here's a cart. It's cleaned up some tags from somewhere, empties it out, and now it's getting reset. And this is just a, a series of programming routes of where it's going to go next. And I'll see if... Let's watch this guy. I'm not sure where he's going at the moment. Oh, we're going that way. Okay. So we're going to green, okay. So what's going to happen is this going to get diverted here. All right, it goes. It sucks out all the used tags. It's going to suck out those used tags there and it comes back out and it's going to go back to brown, which is then going to send it off to another destination. And essentially, it's just all these... Uh, routes programmed to all the various locations that we have. Like that one's green, this one's brown, we've got one over here, it's blue, and it just goes to them in sequence automatically. Okay, our automatic cleanup of tags, uh, this cart looks like this. So we're going to yellow base, we're going to use the hopper, that's our code to say, hey, we're a cleanup cart, and then go back to brown. So that one's going to actually enter in here, it sucks off the hopper tag because it can fit in here, which will then divert it. Once it passes over this hopper, it actually is going to strip off that first yellow. So we've lost the yellow and the hopper. Uh, and then it goes up into here and then back down. This is, slows it down. And right before we start picking things up, we shove into it an unstackable, the wooden sword. That's going to, to go in that first slot uh, where the yellow was so that we reserve that space. Then it's going to pick up the yellow and the hopper that we just dropped off. It's also going to suck out any other used yellow tags as it goes slowly through here. And then back up here, where this will suck out the unstackable, uh, revealing, uh, emptying out that first slot. So then what's left 
will look like this. We'll have the brown thing first with some other tags and items here. So now we have the brown in front. It's going to go back to brown base as the priority there. And what's happening over here is this is just a series. Uh, essentially, it acts as a counter. Every time this cart goes through, goes through one of these, and when it passes over this here, it sequences to the next one. So then the next uh, d detour it takes this. And so that's how we stagger going to the different bases. Once it gets to the end, it resets, and it'll come back to this one here. So it'll go through this one, and then once that hits, this one will get triggered, then this one, this one, this one. So that'll go in the first slot, and then in the second slot is back to brown, and then the third slot is our hopper code. All right, once again, this is a world download, so I'll let you examine and play with the various parts and see how it works. But uh, thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and uh, have fun.